Hi, my name is Mark Lejeunesse, and I'm an ecologist at the University of South Florida. And I'm going to talk about three things today. One, I'm going to talk about tools available to help researchers extract data from plots. Um, then I'm going to talk about how I fit into that space and some of the things I developed throughout the years. And then three, I want to spend a lot of time describing how we could all improve uh, these tools by advocating for really specific uh, plotting practices. There's a lot out there to help you out extract data from plots. Um, one of the heavyweights is WebPlot Digitizer. It's been around for a very long time. It's well maintained. It has a very nice clean interface that helps you get what you need done. In terms of R, there's also many tools available. MetaDigitize is a popular one. Um, I myself have developed some manual and semi-automated tools in, in Metagear, uh, which has been around since 2015. I don't remember anymore at this point. Um, it was the first tool that I created for the package was these data extraction um, functionalities. And, um, but the, the super bummer part of creating all those tools and something that I've learned uh, sadly throughout the years is that nobody uses Metagear that way. Nobody uses any of the manual or semi-automated data extraction tools. And I almost feel like I created some vaporware uh, because that really was a lot of uh, the effort I put into the package was developing those tools. And now I kind of understand why. And so this is what I'm going to spend some of my time talking about is um, one, making it easier for semi-automated tools to become more common in um, extracting data from plots. And two, Again, like I like, I like to end this um, this brief talk to describe how we could all improve um, the use of semi-automated tools by advocating for certain plot types. Now, Metagear um, will soon have a a nice GUI interface that allow for the semi-automated tools to be quickly done. I feel like that was the number one barrier beforehand. Is Essentially, you would have to write a function to um, optimize the object detection uh, functionalities in Metagear. That was just like a turnoff. For most uh, applied practices, you know, all you need is a digital ruler to point and click and measure stuff. Uh, but once in a while, you'll get a high density plot. And to make that quicker and more repeatable, you know, I feel like uh, Metagear could help you out with that. And so here, for example, um, you've been able to do the semi-automated data extraction stuff, you know, for like six years, but now there's an interface to help you out, to help you streamline that parameterization of the object detection models. Um, but this is a super nice plot. And the frequency, unfortunately, of super nice plots is low. What we are presented with is a huge diversity of plots and practices out there. I mean, maybe with just cause, because, you know, scientists get very few opportunities to be creative. And so presenting nice looking plots is one of these things, these avenues in which we could try to um, uh, have fun. But a consequence of that is you break a lot of rules, fundamental rules in plotting things um, with the hopes of making it easier for a reader to interpret your study outcomes that you're reporting in your paper. Um, but that there's a, there's a trade-off associated with that where uh, you made a plot super nice for a human, but consequently it's uh, difficult for an automated tool to uh, make sense of that, to extract the data locked into the plot um, efficiently and um, in a repeatable way. And so here are my uh, pet peeves of plotting, which if we could avoid any of these types of plots, it would 
streamline the entire process. I mean, we could develop automated tools much more quicker if we would avoid all these silly, silly, silly practices. And so basically I'm going to end the talk with a, a giant laundry list of things that add noise to the efficiency of semi-automated tools to extract data from plots. ggplot is a troublemaker in the space. I mean, it makes beautiful plots, but vanilla ggplot does not present axes visually, right? You got to tell it to, to put in the axes. Without the axes, it's actually hard to start um, identifying the coordinates of objects in a space because you don't have that nice, nicely defined boundary. Divorced axes, another R problem. Vanilla R plots will do this. It'll break apart the exact axes for some reason to maybe make it easier for you to understand what's being plotted. Yeah, why? Text in plots, that's noise. That's flat out noise. Easy, great for us to understand what those points are, but awful for a function or an algorithm to try to identify objects because now it has to differentiate between text and the points and that involves some awkward modeling. This stuff, I don't know what you call this stuff. This is becoming more and more popular where you uh, use images instead of points. You got to figure out the centroid of that to extract data. No thanks. High density plots. Wow, that's a trouble too. Um, multiple plots within an image is a problem. Inlaid plots is a problem. Multiple plots is a problem. And finally, multiple y-axis plots are another problem. All these are problems. I hope that in your future research and how you report things, you avoid these issues. I'm working on uh, pulling together a guide, best practice guide, um, that is centered uh, not so much for the human, right? We're going to keep some of the nice human features for readability, but to also make it open for machines to read plots. And a lot of it involves avoiding this stuff. So if you're interested in learning about these details, um, contact me. Uh, we could figure something out. Anyway, um, thanks for your time.